Hello and welcome to CodeBlaze. Now we are finally diving into the new stuff and we'll start by greedy meshing. So before I explain what greedy meshing is, uh, we need to understand why we need greedy meshing and what is the problem with our current meshing solution. So in our current chunk class, I just started a log statement that prints out the final vertex count after the mesh has been generated. So if we go ahead and play the game, you'll see we have round about 19,000 vertices per chunk. Now this number can be way lower if we use greedy meshing. So especially on mobile devices, you'll see the benefits more apparently. Since like a PC can handle this amount of vertices pretty easily, but if you want to target mobile devices and anyway, we can get the same result with lower. So it's just better in that regards. One thing to make note of is the startup time. So we will be relatively comparing this with the greedy method. So I'll just change my chunk to the greedy one. Uh, basically this chunk uses greedy meshing. And if we just go ahead and play. Right. So you can see we get the same result and the vertex count. If you take a look at here, it's around 2500 on average so it's like actually 10 percent of the previous one so we save a huge amount of memory here per chunk and it is more optimized for mobile devices especially and if you see the startup time right it's pretty much the same so there is no additional performance cost we have here so it's pretty much the same as naive machine the benefits are just lower memory lower vertex count so it's more optimized Right, and what greedy meshing is actually doing. So if you take a look, uh, I purposely have set up UVs in such a way that it scales to the face size. So if you can see this whole thing is one face, then we have some faces which are bigger here, uh, lengthwise or breadthwise. So greedy meshing is just merging the faces wherever possible. So that way it can reduce the vertex count. So if I switch to the wireframe view, uh, this one you can see uh, the faces here maybe i should hide the fear which is uh, down below yeah sky sphere right so now you can clearly see what greedy meshing is doing it's creating bigger faces where it can and yeah that's how basically we are saving the huge amount of vertex data or reducing the vertex count so this is what we'll be looking at today and I'll be going over the explanation on how this is achieved and then we'll start with the implementation. So this animation here explains greedy meshing pretty nicely and I had to use the Wayback machine to actually find it again. So in greedy meshing, we basically work with slices of the chunk and what I mean by slices is like if you consider this image and if you just consider the top faces of the chunk that form a particular slice and for any given slice we will create a mask so if you just take out this whole area except the transparent part that would be the mask and then we start merging the mask wherever it's possible so basically we'll iterate through all the slices in all the three directions and then we'll create the masks and we'll merge the masks wherever it's possible so one thing to keep in mind is slices exist between two adjacent blocks. So we won't be actually iterating over the blocks per se, but over the we'll be working in between them. So this would be more clear once I show you the implementation. And if you if this my explanation doesn't click with you, I'll have some great articles linked down below which explain greedy meshing in a bit more detail or in a better language, as I say. And yeah, we can now get started with the implementation. So I have created a new class called greedy chunk based on actor. And this is going to be pretty much same as our existing chunk class. So we have our forward declarations here and this time we don't need the direction declaration. And one thing you notice is I'm including another header file, which is the chunk mesh data. So I have created a separate struct to store the mesh data arrays that way i don't have to declare them again and again so yeah i just have a use struct for that next we have a st internal struct for mask 
So as I said, for each slice, we'll be creating a mask and each mask value will represent the block type and the face direction or the normal direction. And we'll basically be merging the faces which have the same mask value. So that is how we'll be getting the bigger quads. As for the size, instead of going for an int, I have an F int vector. This way I can control the size of the chunk on each direction independently. So I no longer need to have some cuboidal chunks. I can have elongated chunks if I want. And for the private variables, we have the existing mesh and noise pointers. So to store the procedural mesh component and the noise function, then I have the mesh data. This is where we'll be storing the vertex and the triangles array. Then we have the blocks array. So this will be filled according to the height map that would be generated. And finally, we store the vertex count. So this is used to assign the triangles array. So I have the existing three methods, the generate block, the apply mesh and generate mesh. So if you haven't watched the previous part, you can go and get more details regarding them. But basically generate block uses the height map to create, uh, fill the blocks array. Apply mesh basically uses the mesh data and puts it into the procedural mesh component. And generate mesh basically creates the mesh data, right? And we have this create quad method. So when the mask has been fully merged and we have our bigger faces, so we'll take each of those face and pass it to the create quad to actually fill the data using those four vertices of the face. Then we have the get block index. This is basically a flattening method. So we have three dimensional array indexes that we can pass and this will flatten it to the one dimensional index since we are storing the blocks in one dimension. And this get block method will use the get block index to actually get the block value, but it will also have some bounds check. So if our index is out of bounds of the array, we'll be returning, you know, a uh, air block basically. And finally, the last utility method we have is compare mask. So this will just compare the two mask values and tell us whether they are same or not. And depending upon that, we will merge the faces. So that's all for the declaration part. As you can see, it's not much different than the existing chunk class. And in the next video, I'll go over the implementation. So next video will be a bit longer as I want to be as thorough as possible regarding the implementation. So subscribe for the upcoming content. If you have any feedback, please leave that down below in the comments, leave a rating and yeah. Also, one thing I have been getting is the request to show marching cubes or the smooth chunks generation or smooth terrain, you can say. And after greedy meshing, I'll be covering that before the ambient occlusion and the textures part. So that way we'll have different types of mesh generation algorithms covered. And that is something I also have to research on it a bit, but I have implemented it once. So we'll see how much time that takes. So anyway, subscribe for that also and yeah, thanks for watching.